The destination is on your left. Arrived. Hey guys, we're here at POF. That's in for Patriot Ordnance Factory. We're doing their factory tour. We're going to get inside. We're going to show you exactly how these farms are made all the way from manufacturing to assembly uh, to packaging and then to where they get to the shelves at your local gun store. This is Emily. She's going to be going through the tour with me and let's see what's inside. Here we are. Yeah, so there's one directly above us too. Yeah. <laughs> there's another way to carry it upstairs. It was, it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, this thing's awesome. heavy. Who was Frank? He created this place. Mm -hmm. he yeah, so away. he started, her and him and well, Tracy worked for the city in Goodyear. Then he started the company out of the garage of his house. I mean, unfortunately, Frank passed, but we just kept going, you know? We still had so much designs of his that, that were in the process. I mean, we have four full-time engineers now that are kind of taking the ideas that he had on paper and trying to... It came from from aerospace and they were you know, following NADCAP standards and family first, you know, and so like everybody that works here, I mean, we cover 100% of employee health care, 5% profit sharing. Just treat everybody like you want to be treated. Treat everybody like family. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the sister. Nope. Yeah, so yep. this is my middle oh, okay. sister. And then Marley's really... my youngest sister. Yep. Okay. It's one, two, three. So you're the youngest sister? Yeah. So you're the or something else? Yeah. No? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually at 80. Frank's one of our production managers, so he makes sure the machines are always running and getting material costs and all that. Kind of thing. But 2002 originally was Pakistan, the Ordnance Factory. That had a falling out, and Frank started doing it himself and turned into Patriot Ordnance Factory. We have like all the different revisions that we've done over the years of all the version, but everything's it's a short stroke piston system. That's now, kind of what sets you apart from these other. Yeah, guns. so we we were the you first ones. Like the piston driven is like so all the gas stops like right here. And it's, a, it's yeah. essentially like a cleaner gun. It's a it's a transfer of energy instead of the gas coming back down into the bolt or your carrier or the head you know the chamber. Mm -hmm. It just stops and the piston and the rod, the energy from the gas actually acts, uh, yeah. does the action. We're 100% US made, so everything, every spring, detent, you know, aluminum, you know, everything right made the 100%. Well, the like golden bullseye was kind of Frank's yeah, Super Bowl trophy or whatever you want to call it, because we made the lightest weight three weight in the world. Um, basically, the lightest, the lightest rifle. Well, basically, it's an AR 15 size gun, but it actually shoots three away. So we actually make an AR-10, you know, it's usually just 30865. It's actually the same size as a 5.56. We're going in. From here forward, I will be narrating the tour. Our original camera was not able to cut out the background noise. This first room is the receiving department. There's multiple employees inspecting all parts that come in, all packages, and ensuring the quality of the components that they are going to be using to build out their firearms. The second part, of the factory once the components are brought in by heavy machinery are the raw materials are now made into receivers. The machines that cut out the receivers are high pressurized water system machines. They are very high quality. They do very detailed work and they are an amazing pieces of technology that allow the lowers to be cut out, precision cut, and a lot of detail is allowed to be applied to the complete block to be made into a lower that does not warp the material, does not heat up the material, and therefore maintains the shape and dexterity of the receiver. Next is their laser engraving system. So their computers allow either designs to be just uh, imprinted on the receivers or anywhere that they want on the rifles, but may not be completely cut into the metal. However, they also have machines that completely forge the designs into the metal, such as the serial numbers. Next, we come to an area of the facility that creates the upper handguards and custom cuts them to their specifications. What was interesting about these machines is you could take any of the engineer's USB drives, put them into the machine 
and it actually cuts out and delivers the product exactly for what they are coded for. These machines also cut out very precision cuts in the bulk carrier groups and finally they are brought over to other machines where they are deburred and inspected for any imperfections that may have been produced while in the machines. Finally, assembly time. All of the lowers are brought over to the assembly side and they are essentially just assembled out into a complete lower. All of their lowers have drop-in triggers and brought over to a cart where they wait for the next phase of the process, which is the barrels and the hand guards. The station that held the lowers um, were in no particular um, or organization. They just essentially make a variety of models based off of demand and um, material availability at that time. What was interesting about some of their lowers, as mentioned in the beginning, their 308 lower, which they won an award for, is the same exact size as an AR-15. And it actually got the award for being one of the lightest 308 rifles in the world. Finally, they're brought over to the section where the barrels are placed on and installed. The gas piston systems are then installed as well. And here Jackson demonstrates exactly how their gas piston systems work and essentially the physics involved uh, that you won't find in a direct impingement rifle. That really sets apart the POF rifles from many other companies. Finally, they're placed on a rack where they wait for the handguards to be applied. Once the handguards are applied and the muzzle brakes are installed, they finally come over for testing. POF has its own indoor ranges. The indoor ranges have three separate ranges and they do shoot both brass and steel casings through their rifles. They test them anywhere from 100 to 500 to even 1,000 rounds to be put through their rifles. They also have a long distance rifle range that is about, I believe, 100 yards, and they can do some precision shooting testing um, on some of their rifles that they want to market as their precision rifles. At the time, they were shooting a video, so it was occupied by some camera equipment. Finally, the rifles are brought over and screws are tightened, but thoroughly inspect, cleaned, and ready for packaging. They even had a section just for the assembly of their Phoenix 9mm and their uh, Rebel 22s. Then finally, they come over for packaging. So they actually bring in all of their packaging to a section of the facility. Even the packaging is American made and American sourced. They package them up, shipped out as pallets to distributors, or then the firearm stores are ordering them to actually show off in their local gun store. So that was it for the tour. And here we are saying our goodbyes. One last shout out to my boyfriend, Dave, who has been <laughs> the cameraman throughout this whole thing. My hands are shaking. Dave, you've done a great job. I just want to give him a shout out. He's always so great. I get a little credit, right? Yeah, and <laughs> supports everything that I do. So thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks really for coming appreciate by. All of that. And... Pleasure, man. Absolutely. Bye, POF. <laughs> They're the Finally best. made it. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Just wanted to add in a few things that I reflected on after the tour and to let you guys know that you didn't see in the first initial video, um, which was that when I when I went on the tour, I was not aware that it was a family owned business. I wasn't aware that the CEO had passed away two years ago. And I had actually learned that on the tour. I didn't show this in the video, but I uh, started crying and um, it was kind of a lot for me to take in, but it just made me cry because obviously I resonated with it. If you don't know, I lost my mom very suddenly to an accident and now I help my dad manage our business. Um, it takes a lot of strength and you really just take it day by day. And I really um, I really connected with their story and I, I really feel bad that they lost such a special person. Um, I just wanna say that I admire Tracy and Frank's children so much for keeping it going. They 
could be doing anything else. They could give it up. They could have sold it, but they didn't. They believed in his dad's um, goals and his vision, and they are maintaining it and working very hard when they could be doing anything else. Um, I really admire them for that. So it is hard to get up every day and stay strong, and they're doing it. So not only that, but all the people that I met at the factory were just such personable, down-to-earth people, and it's not only the fact that they offer quality products because their products are amazing, but they are also a quality ran company. So for that, I liked POF before I went on this tour and now I, I like them even more. So um, just good people making good products and in, in the most honest way. So from the bottom of my heart, I wish you guys all the best and just keep doing what you're doing.